museums should be important learning environments and the emotional involvement is essential in the process of conveying knowledge. In this lesson, we will deepen a particular concept within the wider framework of the museum as an educational medium and specifically of the museum educational strategies. Edutainment is a neologism that combines the concepts of education and entertainment, two aspects to take into account when designing exhibitions and didactic paths. The museum staff should plan a set of activities to make the exhibitions more and more accessible, well understandable and attractive. The museum operators should effectively educate to art, history, archaeology. Generally speaking, they should educate to culture in an active and not boring way. While creating pleasure and entertainment, they have the task of stimulating critical thinking and the desire to learn always more. The museum, in fact, should be a space capable of entertaining the public while also making visitors reflect and grow. Joseph Pine and James Gilmore, in their paper Welcome to the Experience Economy, identified two dimensions concerning experiences. The first one is the customer participation. Some customers are passive participants not affecting the performance, while others play active roles. The second dimension is the connection between the customer and the event. On one side, there is absorption, on the other, immersion. Considering these dimensions, the authors identified four main categories of customer experience. First, entertainment. This happens when a customer participates more passively than actively and is more absorbed than immersed. Second, educational when a customer shows a more active participation, but not a total immersion in the experience. Third, escapist, when the customer has a greater involvement in the experience. Fourth, aesthetic, when the customer experiences a high level of immersion, but a low level of participation. The museum staff should design expedients in order to build experiences which could also have social value. The social functions of museums will be explored in week 3, but now let's just present some strategies to engage and entertain people while teaching them something new. Museum operators and tour guides should become experts in storytelling in order to increase the interest of the public. Presenting the collections in peculiar ways is fundamental for edutainment too. For example, there are several studies that deal with the effects of the environment and of sensorial stimuli for the perception and memorization of art. Of course, digital strategies have a great importance in the act of teaching while entertaining. One of the next lessons will be entirely devoted to the development of multimedia and digital supports within museums and cultural institutions, so for now we can just say that there are several methods to employ the social media and the new technologies, such as augmented reality or 3D reproductions, for example, with the aim of conveying contents while amusing people. Furthermore, practical workshops, which provide to the visitors the possibility to recreate or reuse particular objects, can be organized within a museum. Another example could be that of letting people touch some selected items in a control setting, under the supervision of an expert or to give visitors samples of the object's materials to handle. The edutainment does not happen only within the museum's building, it can also involve cultural events of different kinds outside the museum. For example, educational demonstrations made by artists or craftsmen, as well as creating living history experiences, can be good strategies to increase the interaction with the audience. The subject of edutainment has close connections with the issues related to participatory strategies in museums, public archaeology, etc. Indeed, the aim is always the same, to convey knowledge to different types of public, to increase their curiosity and their desire to learn more, to entertain while teaching. An important issue to keep in mind is that each cultural event or entertaining activity should respect the objectives and the policy of the museum and that the ultimate purpose is always the cultural education of the public. So the scientific level of the activities must always be high.